Welcome to Myth Busters Down Syndrome Edition. My name is Erin Waddyham. Hi, my name is Dr. Katherine Garforth from Garforth Education. Hi, my name is Eleanor Stewart, and I'm from the Down Syndrome Resource Foundation. I'm the Director of Education and Services. And we're here to dispel some myths about Down Syndrome. Some people think that people with Down Syndrome are lazy. I'm not lazy. I'm a hard work man. You're one of the harder working people I know. It's true, right? Sometimes, actually. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So sometimes for additions, it takes us some while. And I think a lot of, some people misunderstand that about Down syndrome too, is that one of the, you know, a lot of people with Down syndrome will have low muscle tone, which means it takes more effort for them to do physical work, right? So sometimes that just, it comes across differently. It's not that they're lazy, it just means that they might get tired of it faster and need a break, but then they can go back and work again. It's a common one that we hear. I was even, I was literally in a session today where an EA called the student lazy. So again, and you know what, that's a perfect example because after she said that, um, I followed up and I said, oh, like, have you, has she been off today? And more information comes out and mom had just told the EA that she had a horrible sleep the night before. And of course, you're going to be off if you didn't, didn't sleep. And then I just, this one gets me angry because there's just so many contributing factors that could cause a person to present as lazy. And I think when you think about, um, any individual, for example, myself, I felt lazy this morning because I didn't have the best sleep, but I have, you know, I'm able to, to step out of that and have some perspective and use strategies and tools that help me kind of overcome that obstacle. But I think when we, when we start to label individuals with Down syndrome as lazy, we really need to think about what are we actually masking as lazy? So first of all, one reason people are called lazy or individuals with Down syndrome are called lazy is because they might be slow in responding, right? Or slow in, in completing a task. And that doesn't mean that they're lazy. It just means that maybe they need a little bit more time to process the instructions or process the information or consider how they're going to apply whatever task it is that they need to do. Um, Which is something that individuals of all abilities have. We have a range of processing speeds. There are people that watch videos on two times as fast because it's too slow for them to, to actually like pay attention to the information. And then there's, there's the individuals that take longer to process the thoughts and are better when we do pre-teaching strategies and give them the yeah. they need to succeed to begin with. Yeah. And we specifically know that people with Down syndrome have their auditory processing memory is is impacted and is affected. And that means that they can't hold information that they hear in their working memory for very long. And so there's just simple things that we can do, you know, instead of just making all the information auditory, we can make it visual. And then they don't have to rely on that working memory, right? They don't need to remember it. They can just reference it and look at it. And then they're not using up valuable cognitive energy well and that speaks to the whole response time right the time from the that the instructions given to the time that the instructions understood and then the time that it takes them to actually act on what the thought process needed to get there and then we bring in um things like slow, uh, lower muscle tone so the actual start of actually doing something is more difficult and takes more energy because yeah. we don't have the same strength Exactly. And it takes more energy for them to sit at, sit up straight at a desk or stand and wait in line or, you know, all of these things that we really take for granted um, are more, take more effort for individuals because of that low muscle tone. Definitely. And there are things, uh, as you had mentioned, working memory, there are other executive functioning skills that individuals with Down syndrome and other exceptionalities struggle with and it has to do with planning sequencing organizing task initiation mm -hmm. um 
inhibitory control, which means being able to stop from doing something that they have the impulse to do, and all these things. So it's really, you know, individuals with Down syndrome are just as complex as everybody else. And you need to consider all these factors. Another thing that we didn't uh, address particularly uh, with this yet is the additional health problems that may be occurring that can impact their you know drive or motivation to do anything in the moment an individual in pain for whatever reason is not going to have the same get up and go as someone who's not in pain and feeling perfect yeah and that's always our first you know when when teachers or professionals or families come in you know with behavior issues that they're concerned about in their child or um, the person that they're working with with Down syndrome, that's always the first thing you need to check out is any medical issues because that can have such an impact on, on your behavior, on your performance, on your learning, all of that. And we know that individuals with Down syndrome have a lot of medical issues that are related to their diagnosis. Um, and that you know, and also they have another obstacle if they're, you know, limited with their, if their language is affected or their communication skills um, aren't in a place where they can really express what, where their pain is. And because of the low muscle tone, they have difficulty really pinpointing and locating where that pain is. So, you know, you think about all these, there's a lot of friction <laughs> that comes into play when we're really relying only on this one individual to to communicate all of this these complex issues that are going on within them or you know they're they're using a really smart strategy you know if you think about a lot of individuals with down syndrome are pretty good at um using behaviors to avoid doing work and that often comes out uh, comes across as presenting as lazy but you need to again step back and ask, well, why are they trying to avoid the work? And maybe it's because the work or the, the task has been presented in a way that they didn't understand or that they think is too hard for them or it was all presented in an auditory mode and that, you know, they missed part of it. And well, I think they've learned that if they do this behavior, they don't have to do the work. Exactly. And I, that's pretty smart to, <laughs> to figure that out. 